guess our kids are playing basketball or something today, and our parents are there. Uh, please follow me in the call to worship. I found the Father. Lift up your voice. Yeah. <laughs> 
Madam, she's just as successful as uh, the last time. Uh, any any uh, other joys? I see it's Dorothy's birthday. Oh. Is it? Oh. oh. Places, the 
bank or wherever we operate, wherever we are employed, use us as your ambassadors, your missionaries, use us as your friends to bring others to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. These are our blessings we ask in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we just want this temptation, but deliver us from the evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
Genesis chapter 21, 8 through 21. Genesis 21, 8 through 21. It's the story of Ishmael, the story of jealousy and anger. Listen to the word of God as it comes to you from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, 8 through 21. The child grew and was weaned. Which, which child is this? It's Isaac. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not be heir with my son Isaac. And the thing was very displeasing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Be not displeased because of the lad and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For through Isaac shall your descendants be named. And I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and the skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of their sheep. When the water of the skin was gone, she cast the child on one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down over against him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Let me not look upon the death of the child. But as she sat over against him, the child lifted up his voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the Lamb, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the Lamb where he is. Arise, lift up the Lamb, and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Now please turn with me in your New Testament. Uh, it will be on page 14 of the Bibles, if you use a few Bibles. Go page 15, verses 24 through Matthew 10, 24 through 39. Listen. A disciple is not about his teacher, nor a servant about his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his or her master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. That's the non-Christians, that's the people in the world. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, Utter in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim upon the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Neither fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are you not two spiral soul for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's will. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many spirals. So everyone who acknowledges me before people, I will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies
denies me before people, I will also deny before my Father, who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes will be those of his own household. He who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. But he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he or she who loses their life for my sake will find it. He or she who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him. Who sent me. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. In the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts, acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Today is the second Sunday of Pentecost, and we need the thematic seasons, the thematic seasons, themes like Easter or Christmas. And now we get into what we call the ordinary seasons, which really are the chronological steps that Jesus made during his life here on earth. We just follow him chronologically, and we do that in the Gospel of Matthew, of this year. So today I want to direct your attention to just a little theme. We come to this place where we look at God's messengers. That's us. God's missionaries. That's us. God's ambassadors. That's us. Now, most of you have been around here all the time, but in my case, I would in another live, dwell in other countries where there were American ambassadors. And these were guys who were appointed by the President of the United States. They came over to the various countries overseas. And they were supposed to be persons above reproach, good character, people who did good things, people who spoke well of the United States, people who represented the President and the United States, and most of them do a very, very good job. And as Christians, we want you to be ambassadors to do just as good a job as the ambassadors of the United States do for the United States. We want you to do a good job for Jesus Christ. So Matthew's Gospel today focuses on people who are on a mission, a mission for the kingdom. Today, we want you to be on a mission as you leave these doors. We want you to go out there and be fired up and tell others about Jesus Christ. You're missionaries, you're ambassadors, you're messengers of the gospel and the good news of Jesus. I want to tell you a story. An artist was once commissioned to paint a painting of a dying church. And he painted a large, impressive, stately edifice with a huge pulpit and magnificent stained glass windows and rich carpet. And there at the entrance of the door was an offering plate, and it was marked Mission. Missions box. With the contribution, with the slot that was in the box, he painted cobwebs over the slot where you were supposed to put your money in for mission. Well, unfortunately, it's not just the contribution box that has cobwebs. But for many of us, the idea of being missionaries for Jesus Christ has been covered with cobwebs. We can tell everyone else to come and join us wherever we are members of, but 
We are so reluctant to let anyone know that, yes, we belong to Jesus Christ. Many folks think, yeah, leave it to preacher Bob, leave it to the paid staff. They're the ones to go out there and tell people about Jesus Christ. I'm just a Christian. I don't, I'm not paid to do that kind of stuff. Believe it, believe it or not, you're well paid. God pays you well to go out and tell others what God is doing for you. My friends, God has called all of us to carry the good news of the gospel to a dark, dying world. We're all God's messengers to a lost, hurting, and dying world. Well, if we're going to be messengers, we need to be encouraged. So we're going to look at encouraging the messengers. Encouraging the messengers. That's you and me. Jesus was a realist. He really was. He knew that we were humans, and he knew that We'd be shy, and he knew that we wouldn't be wanting to go out there and tell the world about Jesus Christ. But in sending out his disciples, he sent them out. Do you remember? He sent them out and told them what to expect from the world. And once more, he told them what he would expect of them. There was a great prime minister by the name of Winston Churchill. I find, I find great pleasure in quoting some of the things that he, he once said. I'm so thankful for him. I was there growing up when um, he finally died. And uh, the whole nation stopped and celebrated his um, funeral. But he once said, speak boldly. If you have an important point to make, don't try to be subtle. Or clever. Use the pile driver, he said. Hit the point. Then hit it again hard. Then hit it a third time. A tremendous whack. <laughs> now, wouldn't it be nice if we went out there and we started whacking people on the head? <laughs> you must believe in Jesus. Well, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> I did not. I did not deny that saying that. <laughs> But as Christians, we must be prudent. We must be wise. A wise person learns from their mistakes and their failures and builds on them. And we look at all the lost opportunities. I don't know about you, but so many times, God places me in the right place to speak to the right person, and I go. I sometimes remember to tell them about Jesus. Christ, but I don't always do. And I look back and say, oh man, he made an opening or she made an opening. What I should have said was, yes, the Lord brought us through. Or something that lifts up Jesus Christ. My friends, be sincere servants. Those servants that Jesus Christ sent out, those disciples he sent out two by two, they, they were without hypocrisy. They were without pretense. They were true and they were honest to the Lord. And they were true and they were honest to life. And they did the best they could for their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, in addition to encouraging the messengers that you and me, we need freedom for the messengers. Freedom from the fear of people. I know we're all afraid of, of rejection. You know, afraid to. Well, if I tell him or her about Jesus Christ, he's going to, you know. No, they're not. <laughs> I know those are our fears. Well, listen to verse 28. Jesus says, And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. But rather be afraid of him, that's the Father, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Do not be afraid of people. You know, our affairs are really unjustified. But 
We are who we are. My friends, people can kill you. And this morning we remember Dr. Uh, Ibrahim, who is awaiting execution in Sudan. He has a little toddler and a newborn baby. And they're going to execute her because she dares to say in Sudan that she is a Christian. She's Dr. Miriam Ibrahim. And I would ask you to keep her in your prayers. And pray that our president would intervene in Sudan, just as he's intervening with the other issues, that he would intervene and stop them from hanging Dr. Miriam Ibrahim, who is a Christian and will not renounce her faith in Jesus Christ. So people can kill you, and in fact, there are times when they will kill you. They can execute the body, but God's love is as relentless as evil is hurtful and hateful. God loves you with a passion. Just stand up for Jesus Christ and He will be with you. He tells you, if you stand up for Him, He's going to stand up for you before the Father. So we have freedom to reverence God. God truly cares for us and meets us at our greatest point of need. And I serve a God who almost every day puts me next to somebody who needs to hear a good word from Jesus Christ. So we have freedom for the messengers. We have freedom to reverence God. We have freedom in the care of God. God cares about every aspect of our lives. 1 Peter 5, 7 puts it this way. Casting some of our eyes, no, casting all. Casting all of our anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Cast all of our anxiety. What are we scared about? What are we worried about? Cast it on Him. He cares for you. Anywhere with Jesus Christ, anywhere on earth, is a good place to be. We are safe in the hands of our loving Savior. A Savior who died for you and for me. Savior who gave his life for you, that you may be in a good place with him forever. Well, we want to look at the priority for the messengers. We looked at the encouraging the messengers. Look at freedom for the messengers. You will look at the priority for the messengers. God is the center of life. All life. Without God, there is no life. Let us make a daily commitment to follow the Holy Spirit and surrender our lives to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's just turn our lives over. Let's just put Him first in everything we do. Let us consult with Him. Let us pray to Him. Let us read His Word. Let us consult with Him. God is the source of health in all of our lives. My friends, we all need help from time to time. We all need guidance from God from time to time. We all need direction from God from time to time. And we all need God at all. The call for help from God is not a cowardly act, it's a good act. Open our arms to Jesus Christ's strength. Our God's arms are not short. Someone wrote a book that said, your arms are too short to box with God. Well, God is the relevance of life. Friends, in addition to being a good man, Jesus Christ was also a good teacher. Yeah, he was that, like many of us. Here we have several teachers here. He was also a good leader, yes. He was a good role model. We have several of those here. He's also a good healer. He's also a wise person. But above and beyond all that, those are things that we can all strive to be. Those are things we can all attain in this life. Jesus Christ also has the power to 
transformed lives. Because Jesus Christ is the true and living word. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. God in the flesh. Part of the triune God who we serve. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he has anointed and appointed you as messengers. 2 Timothy 1, 7 puts it this way. God did not give us a spirit of timidity. There's a, a spirit of being tame, cowardly. But we have a spirit of power and of love and a calm and well-balanced mind. Our minds are his. We turn them over to him. He controls us. Do not blush or be ashamed then to testify to or for our Lord and Savior. Preach the good news. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. Preach the gospel at all times. How do we do that? We preach by the way we act. This morning you were doing, you're doing a lot of preaching right now by coming to church and fellowshipping with your sisters and brothers and Christ. You're coming to church and reading the word. That's great. Congratulations. Let's live this life that we've started today all the rest of the week. So what we do on a, a Sunday, we carry it over to Monday through Saturday. So that people know, yes, they know we are Christians by our love. By our love, they know we are Christians. My friends, as you leave this place, as you go through those doors, those portals, into the world, you go out as a missionary. You go out as a messenger, you God as an ambassador. And you go in the power of God to tell others about Jesus Christ. So my friends, go. Go into all the world, baptizing you and teaching you all that God taught you, all that Jesus Christ has taught you. Go as messengers. Please now turn with me to him 8, 8.
throughout the world. Uh, please turn with me to hymn number six to seven. Sounds like uh, the manifesto from the people, we the people. <laughs> Thank you. 